Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, this is my first stream ever. Don't really know how it's going to go. But I'm hoping that, well, I'll get better in time. And I hope you all will join me. So anyway, this is going to be not a gaming stream as kick is basically for gaming but this is going to be a podcast and i'm making it live so that i just want to try out how the live streaming is on cake okay so the topic of this i guess podcast i'm gonna call it podcast is in the stream description it's basically why it's basically why I think podcasts and radio are one and the same now I know that's not going to be true to a lot of you all but I think it's true and I think it's true because well I have several reasons I think it's true one I think it's true because podcasts are essentially in the same medium as radio is. And when I say that, I mean radio is a form of telecommunication where you can communicate effectively over a wide range to thousands of people to get your to get whatever you want to talk about across, whether it be cars, internet, anything, infrastructure. So that's what podcasts are. Podcasts are basically the same as radio. It's streaming over a large, over the air, as radio is, over the air used to be. Um, it's going to a wide, a wide range of people and yeah, that's basically it. It's also talking about whatever you want the podcast to be about. So cars, infrastructure, the weather, you name it. So the second reason in my opinion, I think podcasts are basically the same as radio is that podcasts are in a way more podcasts and radio are personal and when I say that I mean podcasts can either be pre-recorded or live recorded the same as radio in this case this podcast I'm doing is live so if I make any fumbles you guys are gonna see it I may not be happy about it but then again I'm trying to make this podcast as personal as I can because I think you all would appreciate it if I make this podcast live instead of pre-recorded just like radio radio can either be live or pre-recorded and speaking about it being pre-recorded because it's pre-recorded you can't really have people tune in live like you like you can on live radio which is another good reason why live radio was a good idea just because with live radio you can have people call from wherever they are and they can give their two cents and it's basically unlike you are with them doing whatever they are on the radio you can actually have conversation with them on the radio about 
whatever you want it to be. So it's like, in a way, you're shaping their radio experiences more than, obviously they're going to talk about whatever it is that they want to talk about on the radio. But if they want to have live people on it, then that's even better because it makes it feel like they're included and like they have a say in what's being reported. And some of those people can actually influence what's actually being said because the news people or whoever's reporting on the news might not, the host, might not even have a certain type of outlook that they have. So in a way, live radio is a lot more personal than pre-recorded. Not that pre-recorded is bad, it's just live radio is just another form of radio. Just like podcasting is podcasting can either be live or pre-recorded and if it's live then that's another way that viewers can shape the podcast. So it feels like the viewers basically right there with them during the podcast. I hope that kind of makes sense. And if it doesn't, then I'll work on my speech and my wording in future podcasts, but those are basically everything Oh, wait, and one more thing for my personal opinion. Podcasts are basically the same as radio in that when you do have people on your radio stations, when you're interacting with them, it makes it feel more personal, like you're actually meeting the person and actually having a real conversation with the person instead of it just being you because yeah it's nice to know what you have to say but we want to know what other people would want to say in response to what you have to say so in a way my radio my podcasting they're both good I think or at least I think they're a lot better than pre-recorded radio and podcast. Although pre-recorded radio and podcasts do have advantages of like you can edit what you want to say or if there's any mishaps you can edit it out. You can't do that in live podcasting like I can't do that now just because it's live. So if I fumble, if I make a mistake, if I say anything wrong, you guys are going to see it. And honestly, I'm okay if you do because this podcast going forward is going to include a lot of people. So it's going to be better if they see my thoughts now or my personality now. So then when they come in, come on the show, if we're, if my topic includes them, then they're going to feel hopefully comfortable enough after seeing my personal, my fumbles on here. And hopefully I'll have them back on another future podcast discussion, which would be nice. Okay, so now we're just gonna go ahead and, oh, wait, one more thing. If you're wondering how I'm streaming this, I'm actually, I have my iPad beside me and it's actually up on the Kick website. So this is streaming to Kick right now. And you're gonna see me occasionally do this because my iPad is down here. And I have to make sure it's recording, so it is recording, so that's good. 
and I'm streaming with OBS. And if you're wondering how I'm actually streaming it to my iPad, I'm just, I just have the Kick website open and my account is open on there. So I thought that would actually be better than just poking it in and doing it that way. Which is actually minimizing a lot of stuff on screen. And I'm using my MacBook Pro 2022 with the internal mic to actually like record and have the audio. So if anything doesn't sound right, then I can't really change that because I don't have any other options available to record audio at the moment. So you guys are just going to have to deal with it. Okay, so let's let's see what the internet has to say about radio versus podcast. And just as a quick, um, well, just to prove that I do have a kick count, and. So this is actually my kick account. Okay, enough about that. Sound of freedom. Okay, so what does the internet have to say about it? Okay, the way that a show is structured varies. I hope this topic is interesting for you all. I tried to find something interesting to talk about, so I know a lot of people aren't going to find this interesting as a lot of people don't really care, but hey, I just thought it would be kind of fun to talk about, so let's talk about it. The way that a show is structured varies, but there are general guidelines to what a podcast or radio certain a radio show contains. Radio shows often being hours long tend to not dedicate much time to one topic. Well, I guess if you have like multiple topics, then you're not really going to have that long to talk about each topic. But if you have one topic, you can. On the other hand, podcasts are usually episodic and will often spend a Entire so exploring one topic. What are the key differences? Okay. Um, with nine out of ten, nope. Uh, this might be important. With nine out of ten of us listening to the radio and podcast listeners increasing monthly, these Oreo platforms, huh, Oreo, all right, all right, these Oreo platforms could be the perfect place to gain exposure for your brand. When choosing an audio medium for your marketing, read on what is considering as we dive into the key difference between radio and podcasts. It must be noted that a lot of information below deals with generalizations and will not apply to every listener. However, it will give a good indication of common listener behaviors and their influence on the creation of radio shows and podcasts going forward. Hmm, interesting. interesting. Alright. Okay, it's on. Good. Due to the live drop-in nature of Radio shows the presenter will need to keep reintroducing their discussion topics or guests for anyone tuning in later and repeating essential information throughout the show. Podcasts, on the other hand, assume that as the list, as the listener has actively selected and downloaded the show, 
anyone listening will do so from start to finish. This means that presenter will not need to repeat the information unless for effect or to emphasize a point. Another key difference between podcast and radio is the playing of music. While some podcasts include songs, they are in the mi- minority across music. This is usually down in license lic- singles around music, but uh, in the lower budget, typically for podcast creation. That is true. That is true. Podcasts, I don't know when podcasts actually came out. But I'm going to assume that when YouTube came out, which was in 2005, that's when podcasts became popular, whereas radio has been around a lot longer. So they're going to have more options for getting the music licensed for their shows. Radio stations tend to contain more current news or focused content especially in shows which are on multiple times a week, such as a daily morning show, while podcasts may address current events due to how they are consumed. They are, they can be listened to years and later. They can quickly become dated, so I tend to avoid time-consuming focus topics. How are they consumed? How a consumer finds and listens to audio playbacks play a vital role in how podcasts and radio shows are written. Podcasts generally listen to the ra- wait. People generally people generally listen to the radio as a passive distraction while doing something else, such as driving, working, or doing tasks around the house. Podcasts, on the other hand, hand are effect, are actively sought out. There isn't th- that isn't to say that podcast listeners are more active listeners. Well, I don't know. I don't know how good this podcast is doing. I don't know how good this stream is. For all I know, nobody could be watching. But it's a fun topic, so I'm going to include this anyway. Actually, how many people are watching? It says three people are watching on my iPad, so. I don't know if they're actually like watching this live, but if they are, then hello, three people. I'm glad you could tune in to this podcast. I hope it's interest interesting for you. Now, where was I? Um, the live nature of Radio shows means that even the most urgent listeners may be unable to tune into every show. By contrast, a fan of a particular podcast is unlikely to listen to every episode in a series, as they are not constrained to a particular time to consume it. There are a level of portability with podcasts. There is also a level of portability with podcasts that radio can lack. Well, I guess if you don't have a portable like radio MF player, then you're going to be stuck listening to the radio at home or in the cars because you can't take that crap in the mountains or anything. Which radio can be listened to anywhere it requires specific wait. Which radio can be listened to anywhere it requires specific apps and a constant internet connection. And if you're in the mountains, then you're going to be out of luck. Making it well, you're going to be out of luck for podcasting too, because if you don't download a podcast on your phone, then If you're underground or in the mountains, you're going to be out of luck. Making it one of the least popular methods of listening to the radio. 
audience variations. Despite all of the exposure podcasts have had in recent years, Radio Min- Radio Min- Radio Min- remains one of the most popular amongst the general public, with almost as twice as many listeners. Yeah, because radio has been around longer. This may be down to how we consume radio. We don't need to know. Well, radio is also in like cars, and I guess, I guess you, I guess radio could be in like restaurants too. So, hey, radio is basically everywhere. So we have no choice. Radio is. A lot of people do listen to the radio because radio is everywhere. Um, we don't need to know what we want to... Wait. This may be down to how we consume radio. We don't need to know what we want to listen to. We can easily switch between stations. The radio stations know this and try to play various strains to appeal to as many listeners as possible. Interesting. Yeah, because in like... I guess if you're doing stuff around the house, you don't really have time to listen to a lot of radio. So, that does make sense how they try to actually, like, show or tune in a lot of things as possible. Maybe like five minute talk talks, because they want to try to appeal, uh, try to appeal to as many people as possible. Then there is then there is a nostalgic factor. Many people grow up with the radio on, and even if they now listen to podcasts, watch TV, or read the news online, they may still listen to the radio, especially when driving. Yeah, cause that radio is in everything, as it is something they already know. This is especially true of older demographics. Even those who know about newer technology, they tend to prefer something easier, easy and uncomplicated, and are more likely to have a strong station or host loyalty. That's true because if you grow with if you grow up with something, then you're more likely not to let it go because it's a area of famili- familiarity. So. If you grow up with listening to CD prayers, then music is going to be a lifelong component of your life because you grew up with it as a baby. So that's that basically influenced your life. And even if you don't know that, even if you aren't musically inclined, you're still going to have some type of appreciation for the music because you're familiar with it, because you grew up with it all your life. And for people who haven't grew up, grown up with it, you're probably not going to care about it because it's not the form of familiarity that you need or that you're used to. So you're not going to care about it even if you prefer it. You're still going to prefer the old things. Okay, so podcasts are more niche with hyper-focused topics and tend to be discovered through other forms of media. Eat a social platforms or search engine results rather than searching for a podcast itself. When it comes to something... Wait... When it comes to someone trying to find any old podcast to listen to rather than a specific one, most are chosen by regular updated charts or by word of mouth. However, it is required it it requires the listener to know what sort of thing they want to listen to. True because with the radio, you could just listen to whatever you want on the radio. 
and by calling in. But you can do that with with the podcast. I mean, yeah, you could call in. You could like somebody could host the podcast or whatever. But unless you actually know what you're searching for, or unless you actually know the country where your name, then you're not really going to be defining the podcast because. You need a very unique title in order to find that specific t- podcast. Regarding generational, regarding gener- generational differences in audiences, min- millennials consume the most audio content of any generation, and listen mostly to music, streaming, and podcasts. While Gen Z listeners prefer the radio, is that true? Cause, wait, wouldn't Gen Z be like in their in their forties no. or something? So that doesn't really. So, Gen Z people would be in their 40s. Would they still listen to the radio? I don't know. But let's get back. Okay, so... Uh, Gen Z... It's worth noting that while these are statistically correct, This will vary depending on factors such as topic, choice, time of day, and personal preference. Okay, the worst. Editing and moderation. While there is less formality to a podcast due to in part of lack of recognition and expectations, there is a playfulness that comes from live radio in an unscripted nature even when it is in fact scripted because yeah you form bonds when something is live and unedited because people could see more of who you are and if you edit out things then that's basically i guess in a way of hiding what makes a personality But this is something we're going to do. Okay, podcasts are usually preferred. Preferred? Podcasts are usually pre-planned and then edited afterwards, creating a snicker in product, but one which sometimes loses the personality that a live show thrives on. And this is what I'm talking about. Pre-print podcast would be cleaner, and it will get your point across a lot quicker. But you lose the sense of personality that comes out with live podcast, which I guess is why live podcasting is so much more available, or why people do live broadcasting a lot more. Because if you go to Twitch, then a lot of people are doing live broadcasting there. I har- I hardly can see anybody ever doing like any any type of pre planned broadcast. Okay, where was I? And when I say a lot of people are doing live broadcasts, I mean like there's thousands of those on Twitch. So that kind of shows you that live broadcasting is very popular. Perhaps because of this lack of editing, radio remains the most trusted form of media, even in today's war world of general mistrust. This has significantly helped by the FCON re- regulations with which 
stations must be was must adhere to to keep their license. Okay, interesting. I did not know that. I was taught something new, and you guys were too. While some people listen to podcasts expressly because they are not regulated and can personally see them as more trustworthy as mass media do not rule them, the general public still opts to trust radio more. Because radio has been around for longer, too. This might also be down to the do-it-yourself nature of podcasts, which can make them appear to be less how do you say that? Form of entertainment. Although, as much more celebrities and corporations get into this act, this this quickly changes. Yeah, because I I do see a lot of people, a lot of celebrities are doing like podcasting more. Like just in. I don't know if Justin Bieber is doing podcasting, but maybe not him. Don Bagino, even if they had like radio stations before, like maybe on Fox or CNN or like any of these big time radio station um, networks, um, I've noticed that they're doing a lot more podcasting as of late. And I don't know if it's because they want to or if it's to get more viewers, but they're doing it. So that's just one of the way podcasting is trying to, which I think is a good thing. You know, podcasting is, podcasting is basically another source of, like, it's another form of radio. I mean, it's not going to, change radio because radio is still here it's just another form of radio in my opinion just it's another form of a internet talk show or internet radio if i'm not using the term right you all know what i mean there are crossovers to consider many podcasts start as spin-offs of other media such as, for example, a two actresses from the American tax show, TV show, The Office hosting a successful podcast discussing the show. This means that there are always scope to use a, to use as a podcast as a vehicle to expand other formats. Then there's the relatively obvious crossover with on-demand radio when radio shows are available to download after broadcast. While this may not technically be classed as podcast, they are usually found on the same platforms as downloadable or streamable content. Okay, final thoughts. While podcasts can help you home in on hyper-specific audiences, it is always best to cover all your bases with a mix of podcasts in radio PR. Radio will always help you reach a wider audience and people who may not have otherwise known of your brand. Still, podcasts can help you dive deeper into a topic as they have more extended time allocations to the subject. The best course of action is also implementing a mixture of the two into your marketing campaign. Okay, that's the end of this web page. So now I want to. Oh crap, my computer's slowing down. You know what? I'll just do a new tab. When did you put. On the, on the radio become available. Okay, so radio broadcasting was the cheapest form of entertainment and it was provided 
and it provided the public with far better entertainment than most people were accustomed to. As a result, its popularity grew in the late 19, dang, 1920s and early 1930s. And by 1934, 6% of the nation's households had radios. Did people listen to radio in 1920? When was the radio first prevalent? Hmm. Okay, when was the radio made? When was radio made? All right. Radio was made in 1890s. Italian inventor, I'm not Italian, so I'm not even going to begin to pronounce his first name. Pictured at right. First, okay, what does he look like? So that's him. Okay, so... He invented the idea of a, of a radio or wireless telegraph in the, in the 1890s. His ideas took shape in 1895 when he was sent a wireless Morse code message to a source more than a kilometer away. Hmm. Okay, so that was some fun history about the radio. And like I said, podcasting is never... I don't believe podcasting is going to beat radio. It's another form of radio, but it's not going to beat radio in a way. And when I say it's not going to beat radio, I mean people are always going to need the radio for anything. Like, that's how they get their news, even on TV. So... Radio is not really going to go anywhere. That sounds like most advertisements are broadcast on the radio. It's just podcasting is a new form of radio. Or it's a new form of entertainment. As the radio, it is, but then it isn't. If the news is concerned about it. Just like how the telegraph was more or less the first radio. And then after the telegraph, it became the radio, and now we have podcasting. So, it's interesting to see what's going to actually replace podcasting, but I think podcasting is going to be for, it's going to be around for a long time. So, if anyone, if any one of you want to actually become a podcaster, then this is your chance because I think podcasting is... A lot of people are already doing it around already, so that tells you that it's very popular. And, you know, just like, just like cars, people need things that are essential to human productivity. Like, if we did not have the radio, we would not have any idea of what's going on. I mean, of course you have the newspapers and everything, but if you think about it, newspapers were... Okay, so it was the telegraph, and then it became newspapers, and then it became the radio, and then now podcasts. So just like with um, cars, you had, first you had walking, and then you had bucking carriages, and now you have cars. So these things are essential to human productivity, which is why they're, I mean, they can't go away because like everybody needs them, everybody uses them. Like, sure, they may die out, just like the, okay, just like the Apple iPod, um, you know, the early iPods, like the iPod Classic, those died out, but they became, but we have another iPod that's actually 
able to do a lot more. Like this iPod right here. This is my iPod Touch 7th generation. And they can do a lot more than the actual iPod Classic. Which is why I think Apple discontinued the iPod Classic and all the other iPods beyond the iPod. Well, Apple discontinued the iPod Touch. But that was both. But that was after the iPod Classic and the others were discontinued. But I don't think Apple is going to actually discontinue the iPod. Like, the iPod is basically lived on by the iPhone. Because the iPhone can do everything the iPod, iPod can do. And so can the iPad. So... Nothing really, nothing really changes. It's just things become more and more. When technology advances, you become, you have more ways to actually make something new or better because po there's a lot of things podcasting can do that radio can't, and there's a lot of things radio can do that podcasting can't. So nothing like radio and podcasting are not really going to beat out each other because there's things one can do better than the other and another can do better than the other so this is just a new form of like expression or entertainment and that's why people listen to radio in the old days they wanted entertainment And it just so happened that radio was the fastest way to that entertainment. Which explains why radio is also in cars. And in restaurants. And everywhere. Because that was the fastest way of entertainment. And podcasting is more or less a new form of that. Entertainment. That's just what podcasting is, entertainment. Just like this podcast episode, it's just entertainment. Talking about podcasting versus radio. I'm sure a lot of people aren't going to really be interested in this, but for a lot of people who really like to think, then who knows, this might be up your alley, this might not be up your alley. I don't know. But anyway, that's basically going to be the end of my, I guess, episode one of podcasting. Don't know when I'm going to make an episode two. But this was very enjoyable for me to talk about. And who knows, maybe it was enjoyable for you all too. I don't know. So, yeah, this is going to be my first episode and I'm going to end it here so oh crap maybe I should not have done that eh it's okay if you see me on kick then you already know what my channel name is going to be so if you want to follow me or I guess follow me to be up to date about when I'm going to like release another podcast or anything else then you're free to do that and if you don't want to, then don't do it. But regardless if you do or if you don't try to follow me, I'm still happy that whoever is out there listening, I'm still happy that this provided entertainment for you all. So anyway, that's going to be it. And I'm going to set this down. My cake username is um, Trip one underscore one and i'm gonna stop the recording now take care y'all bye